um, CEO and co-founder of WePlay. Um, I've started mobile development, app development about 10 years ago. It started back in the painful days of J2ME, which we already heard in an earlier talk today. Then back to native uh, C++ development with Symbian. And then later on, native iOS development, Android development, native Windows Phone development. And we've learned a lot during these days. And that's also what led into the creation of WePlay. And that's why I want to talk to you about development of cross-platform apps with Qt and uh, WePlay with QML and JavaScript. So who of you guys have heard of Qt before, the Qt framework? Wow, awesome. Didn't expect that many. Uh, so yeah, for sure for the rest of you, you for sure know some apps that were created with Qt, like Skype VLC Media Player, several platforms based on Qt, uh, KDE Linux is completely based on Qt, and if you haven't been on a plane lately, uh, having watched the uh, in-flight entertainment system, that for sure also was running on Qt. So Qt is uh, the number one cross-platform um, framework for desktop and PC. Uh, it exists since more than 20 years now, has more than about a million active developers, and uh, it's usable for PC, so Windows, Mac, and Linux, as well as iOS, Android, Windows Phone, and embedded platforms. And the way that you write applications in Qt frameworks is either with C++ traditionally, or with QML, which I'll show you later on, and JavaScript. So I'll focus on these parts now, because these are the most relevant ones nowadays. So what Qt basically does is it abstracts a lot of platform features, cross-platform, uh, gives you access to file access, storage, uh, multimedia features, sensors, um, networking, et cetera, et cetera. So how comes we plan to play into this? Well, we have extended the Qt framework and traditionally started four years ago writing a game engine, a cross-platform game engine that builds on top of Qt and makes it easier to write games with, uh, based on the Qt framework. And since a year now, we have released a new product, which is called WePlay Apps, which you can use for mobile app development uh, on top of Qt. And the way that we extend the Qt framework is really to make it possible to have like native looking and native uh, feeling of mobile platforms, especially iOS and Android. Uh, also, we have a lot of plugins that you can use on your mobile projects, like Flurry, Facebook plugin. This is just the five lines of code, and you have these third-party SDKs then available in your app. So we have been a technology partner now since two years, started on WePlay four years ago. There's currently about 15,000 active developers using WePlay, uh, and these are some customers using us on a daily basis. So as a quick intro, what QML actually is. So QML is the language you write mostly your code of in, uh, and QML stands for Qt Markup Language. So for the demo, you can see on the left-hand side here, uh, a counter that is counting up. That's the full source code you need for this app on the right-hand side. Uh, as you can see, it's a declarative language, so it's, it's quite easy to understand and read, and there's uh, just one state that you have, a little bit similar to React, where um, whenever you have a, a property, like here, a count property, and whenever this count property increases or changes, then all the um, dependent properties on this one also get updated. So the text binding, for example, below automatically updates when the count property updates. The text gets bold if the count gets bigger than five, for example. Uh, what you can also see in this example is the I do nothing, pretty useful function. And um, the cool thing there is that you can use just normal ECMAScript JavaScript uh, within the QML language. So it's fully ECMAScript uh, compatible. You can also use any ECMAScript libraries uh, or any existing JavaScript code that you have. Uh, the specialty, though, is that all of these items that you see there are implemented in C++. So the, the performance of that is really very high. There's, for rendering, there is an own OpenGL or OpenGLES-based scene graph renderer, which does automatic texture batching, for example, to have really good performance on mobile devices. And also the expressions that you see there, they are also translated into C++. Um, yep. And originally, QML was designed as a language to do rapid UI development and rapid UI animation development. And this is also something that you can see here that also for designers it's very easy, understandable, and readable. And you need very little amount of code. So I'm now going to show you some of the demos um, that we did to showcase what you can do with, with Vplay and Qt. 
That's getting tricky. So this uh, app is called vPlay Sample Launcher. It's a desktop application that comes uh, with the free download of the vPlay SDK. It's a full range of samples that you can use, and all the samples are open source. So you can have a look at all the source code of these. Uh, there's a range of samples, bigger ones and smaller ones, and I'll now pick the Twitter example from here. Uh, you can go to the documentation of it, browse the source code, or we just launch it now. There we are. So we rebuilt the, the Twitter application basically for this demo. Uh, and what you can see here, all the data comes really from the Twitter REST service. Um, you have a scrolling list view here, um, one detailed view of the tweets, a list view, a message view, and a profile view, and things like this. So this animation that you probably know from the native Twitter app. So this is super easy to do in QML. Uh, the whole application in total has like about 800 lines of code in total, including all the data fetching and everything. So this really shows that um, rapid development is, is really one of the key benefits of Qt. Another example that I want to show you is this property finding app. It's probably familiar to um, several of you because there's also a Revendalich tutorial, and this, this app exists for several different frameworks like Xamarin, Titanium. And we did a code comparison there, and um, this is by far the minimum amount of code that you need with, with vPlay and Qt compared to the other solutions out there. So what the app does is basically you can enter a location, then choose one of the properties, and uh, add this to the detailed uh, list, the local list. So another cool thing that you can do with vPlay is that you can switch the, the uh, theme. So you can simulate, oops, you can simulate different platforms while you're developing on the desktop. So if I'm now switching over to uh, Android, you will see the material design layout of Android. You can also switch to iOS then and have the native iOS controls, like also swipe back gesture or something like that then works, which does not on Android. And Another thing that you can do is you can make it bigger, and then you have an uh, automatic master detail view of your application. Yep. So getting back to the presentation now. So this is the amount of lines of code that you need. The property app that you see in, in full is about 300 lines of code, with rep 800 lines of code. And there's absolutely no platform-specific code in there. So the native. UI is really abstracted away by our components, and you only have one code base that you need to maintain. You can also download this app on the App Store, so it's available on iOS and Android App Store. Just enter Qt and vPlay, uh, it's the top ranked app there. So, to get a little bit more into code and to show you what it is like coding with vPlay, uh, I'll show you one of the a list view example, a basic one, and then how to do navigations. Oh, that's the good old times on the left. Um, so what we're going to build now is a simple list view with several items, and this is the full amount of code that you need. So on the left-hand side is the full code that represents the right-hand side app. Um, it's, the main component is a list page, which gets filled by 60 items, uh, which is the model. Whenever you select and click on one of the items, then a detail page is open and loaded, and in the detail page there is a button and a text below each other, which loads another detail page. So I'm now, now going to show you how the development environment is looking like. So IDE is called Qt Creator, um, which is based traditionally on Eclipse. Um, and yeah, you can do all of your development, debugging, etc., within Qt Creator. And I'm just running this app now. So it supports debugging, profiling, like I said, both CPU and GPU profiling. And the way that the app is looking is just like this, and you have the several items here. Again, you can change the platform style again, um, make it bigger. So as you see, also the animations and page transitions change depending on the platform that you're using. And yeah, the second part of this is the, the main page, which has the root app component, and then a navigation component, which loads the two pages, the list page and the other page. And as you can see here, we are enabled this master detail view here with just one property binding. Even if the size is big enough to be a tablet, and if we are in landscape mode, then we show this master detail view. And again, if we make the screen bigger to simulate the 
a tablet device, then you can see this master detail view here. Cool. So that's about it about Qt Creator. Um, another. Uh, benefit of QML in general and then uh, replay is that you can very do easily uh, branding and custom theming. So one thing that's also sometimes pretty tricky to do in, in productive apps and to sum this all up. Well, number one key advantage against other frameworks, I think, is if you have an app that has a lot of custom UIs, which is more and more apps are doing this. For example, if you look at Spotify or Tinder, there's very little native code actually, native looking code in there. The trend is more towards doing custom design and custom brands anyway. So this is where you definitely should have a look at the QML language as this was really designed for this purpose. So custom UI, animations, and if you want to do like native looking, there's also components that help you out there. Uh, number two is the learning curve, which is really pretty low compared to other frameworks. So for developers with JavaScript experience, it usually takes a day or two to get to about like 90% productivity. Uh, this is also something that we have been ranked very high in the uh, recent developer survey by more than 2,000 developers, um, where it was a comparison between Xamarin and Titanium, and we play in Qt. And um, well, the time to learn the frameworks was actually the lowest of all frameworks compared there. And also the time that you could save in bigger projects was also lower because of this QML language, which helps you to write very little lines of Qt uh, with yeah, essential output. And number three is the performance. So all of these items you write in QML are then translated to C++, the custom renderer that you have. And also if you have any existing native code available in Java for Android, Objective-C for iOS, or any existing C++ code, you can very easily integrate this into the Q, uh, QML scripting language. So there's a pretty fine set of components that you can use, and you just need to define the interface that your UI can then use. And yeah, it's, it's basically an, a matter of maybe 30, 40 minutes to have a wrapper of your existing native code for uh, the QML scripting language. Cool. So if you want to try it out, just check over to vplay.net. It's free to download. And you can follow us on vplay engine. And also our offices in Vienna. So if you have any questions, just come to us. <laughs> Thanks.